Five years ago, I embarked on a journey in search of knowledge, adventure, and myself. This chapter of my life was filled with science, learning experiences, great people, and of course the ocean. This year, this journey has come to an end. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So, hello everyone. If you are new here, you probably don't know much about me, except that I'm just really good at games. And I don't know how I said that with a straight face. For the last five years, I have been working on my PhD. And on the 27th of November of this year, I finished it. And thank you all for the new board and all the You can now call me Dr. Pinto. Don't, you can call me Maria, it's fine. If you don't know what a PhD is, PhD stands for Doctor of Philosophy, and it's usually, in most countries, the highest academic degree that you can be awarded by a university after a course of study. Usually you do a PhD after a master's, but it's also possible to do it right after your bachelor's degree, depending on the circumstances. And it can last something between three to four years, and very shorter PhDs, up to nine to ten years in very extreme cases. And as a PhD student, you're usually responsible for having your own project and developing it, obviously with the help of a supervisor, which normally is someone with more experience and higher up in the academic ladder. The ultimate goal of a PhD is, besides developing your own research, is to usually write a PhD dissertation which is basically a sort of a book where you describe everything you've done and report your results. The project of my thesis, in a very simplified manner, was about bacteria and plastic pollution in the ocean. Now, this is a very broad topic. Obviously, I did not study everything within this topic. But for example, one part of my project was to try to better understand whether or not there could be bacteria in the ocean that can degrade or eat the different types of plastic in the ocean. I, can act, I cannot give you a yes or no answer to that because it is a rather complex topic. I might, however, do a video about it in the future if that's something you're interested in. Let me know down below. My PhD lasted almost five years and it ended with a PhD defense on the 27th of November of this year, 2020. A PhD defense for a lot of universities, if not most, is the last step of your PhD. And it's basically an event where you present your work in front of a jury that then asks questions about your work afterwards. The defense happens after you hand in your dissertation. In my case, I handed in my dissertation already in September, and between September and November, I was just taking care of bureaucracy stuff, preparing for my defense, and somewhere in between, I also went wild camping to kind of de-stress a little bit. I was also rather not worried, but anxious about the fact that I didn't really know how the defense was going to be, because usually you have external reviewers that most likely come from other countries. And in a normal scenario, they, you, your university would pay for them to come a couple of days to your university to present their work and also obviously to be the uh, evaluator of your thesis. But of course, given the current state of the world, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I would have a presential presentation or if I, everything was going to go virtual. It was made clear very early on that the external reviewers would not come to Austria, which made total sense. But it was still not sure about whether or not I could present in front of a public. Ultimately, that was possible. I had a, like a hybrid kind of presentation in which I presented in a very large amphitheater where there were a couple of people like here and there. My supervisor was there, my boyfriend was there, the chair of the committee was there, and like a couple of my colleagues. The rest of my colleagues, my family and my friends, 
and the external, all the other uh, examiners, they were all online, virtually present. And I was kind of nervous about this setting because of the sound and if there were any technical failures, but everything went well in the end. And I actually enjoyed my defense. I was very nervous. I have to say very nervous the week leading up to my defense. I would wake up anxious, which is something that rarely happens to me. But I was every day for that week, I was waking up anxious. And I was anxious, anxious until the point, or nervous, maybe is the better word. I was nervous until the point I started presenting. Because I then I went full on autopilot and all the nervousness disappeared. I had repeated that presentation so many times that I, I even forgot what I said because I, it was just like, I went full on autopilot, that's what it was. And even the discussion and the questions that the examiners asked me after my presentation were really fun to answer. Even though not many people were there and it was a shame that I couldn't celebrate properly, it was, I still felt very spoiled and loved that day, even by the people who were not there. I got this great doctoral hat made out of recycled lab material here in Austria. And I think uh, some other countries in Europe have the same tradition. When you finish your PhD, your colleagues prepare you like a funny doctoral hat. There is this, you know, official doctoral hat that you use for ceremonies and stuff. But this is like, has, can have the same shape, but it's just like a funny one. And it's prepared by the, your colleagues. And mine was just awesome. I loved my hat. It was a great idea. It's very fulfilling to accomplish something that you have dedicated years of your life to accomplish. It's at the same time strange because something which was constantly there with you and in your mind and also in what you did in your day-to-day -day life is suddenly gone. A couple of weeks ago, I was cleaning up my lab bench and cleaning up my office and nostalgia really hit me. I, you know, this, these two places that were kind of like a second home to me and that were so familiar to me were suddenly not mine anymore, which was very strange. The best word for that feeling is probably nostalgia, which is a good thing. It means that I had great times, means that I had times that I will miss and times that I look back to with happiness and joy. During these last years, I learned and experienced a lot. Of course, I learned a lot about my topics. I learned a lot about microbiology, about oceanography, about marine biology in general, about bioinformatics and molecular biology. But I also learned a lot about myself. I learned how I work with people and how I work with people under certain conditions. I learned how I, I deal with certain conditions, how I deal with failure, how I learn from failure. I also had a chance to teach and supervise master's, master's students, which was great. I love that. I had a chance of going on conferences to hear other scientists talk about their work. I met some of those scientists. I had a chance of going on research expeditions. I mean, I went on an expedition from New Zealand to Alaska. <laughs> How awesome is that? It was not always easy and obviously I also had bad moments. There were failed experiments. There were rejected papers. There were terrible presentations. There were slight burnouts. And other things that come when you, usually when you do a PhD that are unavoidable. But honestly, I learned a lot from these hard times and from these failures. And because I had them, I treasure my accomplishments much more. Right, so what's next? <laughs> Great question. I am still very much going to continue working with something related to the ocean. That is my passion and that's what I want to wake up every day to do. So I'm trying to take it easy over these last, these two weeks because to just completely relax and uh, clear my mind before I make a plan of action. It, but one thing for sure is I am going to continue on doing YouTube videos. I have a lot of ideas and that's it. And by the way, I started a Patreon last week and I want to thank all my 11 first Patreons. 
they were, I, I'm so excited by having someone who's willing to support me in that way. Thank you so much. That's incredible. So you can expect to see me more regularly now, now that I don't have a PhD to finish, unless I find a job, which for sure you will know because I will let you know. So right now I feel a bit scared, but mostly very excited for the unknown future. Because the fact that the future is unknown means that there's a lot of things that can happen. And that's exciting. So I want to thank you all for listening to this long video. And I want to thank you all for joining this journey with me. Thank you.